Andrew, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Pleasure to have you. Okay, so first we have to ask, I have to ask, what does an aerospace engineer do? What is it that you do? Well, an engineer builds things. An engineer figures things out and decides how to put them together. So an aerospace engineer does both aircraft, uh, the aero part, and space, the space part. So aerospace engineers build all the planes you fly, all the spacecraft you see launching all the space missions, anything to do with that. And sometimes they do a lot of aerodynamic work, which even gets into the automotive industry. So anything to do with aerodynamics, flying things, that, that's what an aerospace engineer does. Okay, perfect. See, I like this. You're explaining things in nice, easy ways that we can all understand. So tell us a little bit how you got involved in this, in this line of, of work and study and why it appealed to you so oh, much. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, my mother actually worked for Air Canada, so I used to be on airplanes all the time. And I was really interested in flying. I was actually in Air Cadets when I was younger. And uh, when I was 13, I got involved in Air Cadets. And it's a really good way to get your pilot's license. So any kids out there can go and join Air Cadets. There's probably a local squadron. And I always wanted to fly planes and build planes, design planes. And when I went to university, I was actually focused on airplanes. Uh, but then I had a really good friend who was really interested in space, mm. and I think it sort of rubbed off on me. When I was younger, I really liked Star Trek, but I was disappointed that we couldn't actually go and meet aliens and jump to other stars and fly at warp speed and that kind of thing. <laughs> but uh, it really occurred to me later on that there are a lot of really interesting places that we really can go mm -hmm. in our own solar system. Our solar system has a series of 100 moons, all of which are different with unique features that are really interesting. Some of them have atmosphere, some of them have volcanoes. So really interesting place, and I wanted to get involved in that. Yeah, and you've kind of been able to live some of that too, right? You've experienced half a dozen Canadian space missions. You've earned a PhD in human space flight. What is that like? Can you describe what it's like to, to take part in something like that? Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. I went to Carleton, actually, for undergrad in Ottawa, where I'm from originally. And then I went to MIT to do a PhD in aerospace engineering. And it's just amazing there. You get to meet all the astronauts. I mean. I think four of my professors were astronauts. One of them was the first female fighter pilot. Wow. I got to meet several people that walked on the moon, including Buzz Aldrin, Dave Scott, the commander of Apollo 15. Yeah. Uh, it's just a really innovative place. And I got to perform experiments on some of the astronauts, actually. And we simulated Martian and lunar gravity, so as if they were walking on the moon or Mars. And we were designing spacesuits and optimizing the spacesuits for that gravity because there's a really big interaction between the spacesuit stiffness and how you design the spacesuit and the gravity level. Okay. You get told often, I guess, that you have a pretty cool job, that going into work is, is a lot of fun, I'm assuming? It is, yeah. When I was here in Cambridge, I got to design a lot of Canadian space missions. So I worked on satellite missions, which go around the Earth all the time. We don't think about it, but space interacts with our lives on a daily basis. Mm. You know, all your banking transactions, a lot of your telecommunication, a lot of your TV goes okay. right through space. You yeah. might be watching this from space right now, in Ooh. fact. Uh, GPS, when you get in your car, all that is based on space. Uh, we don't, space impacts our life, lives on a daily basis. And I was working on missions that impact Canadians, surveying the North, uh, space telescopes that look out into the uh, depths of the universe to try to figure out where does the universe come from, where are stars being formed. We're a third generation stars, so there were many stars before us. And uh, just figuring out the universe. I think these are the kind of the basic questions that little kids want to know about. Yeah, well, and know. I love how you just said it. You know, I'm, I'm just figuring out the universe. Yeah, <laughs> don't we all want no to know deal, about right? the life, the universe, and everything. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what it's all about. Yeah, wow, wow. So interesting. Uh, Andrew, you've, you've also done something else. You've gained the title of Canada's greatest know-it-all, right? Yes, recently, a couple weeks ago. Okay, yeah. so from what I understand, this is a grueling eight-week battle of stamina, teamwork, knowledge, and wits. Tell us a little bit about Canada's greatest know-it-all. They try to de-emphasize the teamwork, actually. They try to split us split apart, you apart and, and cause as much conflict other. as possible, course, which I think, I think you saw a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. Um, Canada's Greatest Know-It-All is kind of a do-everything competition. It's okay. really about being presented with a new challenge every day. You wake up and you don't know where you're going. They black out all the vans and it's all this big surprise and you have no idea what you're going to do and you get thrown into this new challenge all the time uh, that's totally out of your element. Okay, give us some examples of the challenges. If you I can. never wanted to be a skydiver, uh, oh. but then one day uh, I thought we were going to African Lion Safari, <laughs> but they drive up and we see the sign for skydiving and we all just <sighs> turn ashen white. I mean, I've never wanted to do that. Um, however, it does appeal to me anyway, just because it's the aviation thing. It's a plane. That's Planes are cool. Say, I'm a pilot. I've never thought about uh, jumping out of a plane, yeah. but I love flying planes. Okay. So it does appeal to me. Um, 
just totally out of your element. I mean, they bring in a, a set of high school kids and you have to do a science fair or um, all kinds of things that you never picture. They give you a, um, a span of water and you have to build a bridge across it. Um, they put you in a gravel pit and say there's a bomb you need to defuse and you have to do scuba diving to go underwater, crack codes and defuse the bomb really quick. So there's just all these things that no one really gets to do in real life or shoot a giant cannon. Uh, and it's just fascinating and fantastic. It's, what a great uh, opportunity. It's amazing eh? challenges every day and you have to use your mind to solve them. And it, The thing about Canada's Greatest know all is it brings together really diverse people. Everyone has a really different set of skills. You have uh, oil, oil rig workers from Alberta coming out and competing against scientists. And huh. you know, it's, it's about can you build things? Can you apply practical skills? And some challenges appeal to everyone. Mm -hmm. But I guess the key is you have to be really diverse and you have to be able to handle anything that comes your way. Mm -hmm. So you have to think on your feet and take your knowledge and apply it in a way that you never thought you would before. Mm -hmm. uh, was it a tough competition? Did, were, did you kind of oh, peg yeah. certain people and say, ah, you're going to be out, you're not a problem. Ah, there's my challenge. Absolutely. Okay. I think anyone who's watched the show probably picked Scott as a front runner and so did I. I w Scott was the only one I was really afraid of uh, in terms of I thought Scott could beat me for okay. sure. Okay. There's others that I thought, you know, may win, but I wasn't really afraid of anyone else. Yeah, I was at Comdev uh, for two and a half years, and Comdev is one of the bigger space companies in Canada, and they do a lot of innovative work. Comdev did some of the work on the James Webb Space Telescope Fine Guidance System, which is the successor to Hubble, which peers into the far distant of uh, the universe, tries to figure out where stuff came from, mm -hmm. basically. Uh, Comdev also does a lot of uh, satellites involved in surveying the oceans for uh, ships in distress. And uh, almost any uh, Canadian space mission, actually, one of the projects I worked on, on was a Canadian space telescope, which is ultraviolet spectrum. So it uh, looks at young new star formation. Okay, and and when we talk about Waterloo Region, I mean, is this we're, we're so known for science and technology yes, here? Is space science and technology, would you say, are we one of the the leaders in Canada or up and coming? Oh leaders? yeah, absolutely, yeah. especially per capita. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the Waterloo Region is a fantastic region of um, science and technology. I mean, Perimeter Rim and Comdev is one of the uh, big companies here, and they're one of the bigger space companies in Canada. So yeah, you definitely have a lot of. Um, science and technology happening right in this area. Okay, Absolutely. that's exactly why we're talking about it this hour. Uh, so you've spent some time here from Ottawa, you said. Tell us about the space competition that would take you <laughs> far, far away, Andrew. <laughs> Actually, it's not that far. It's into uh, Earth's atmosphere, but it, it is into space. Says, okay. <laughs> Only about 100 kilometers from huh, the surface. But that's nothing. Yeah, it is, um, it is a competition to get into space, and it's something I've always wanted to do. I was in the astronaut recruitment um, but this is a, an opportunity to fly in space in a suborbital flight. And what I would really like to do is fly an experiment because I'm a microgravity researcher. All my research at MIT was how does the human body react to being in space? How do we keep humans alive in space? And how do we keep them healthy in space? And so I thought this would be a really good opportunity to fly an experiment. And uh, often students and, and uh, young children have really good ideas about what would be interesting experiments to fly in space, really okay. cool ideas. Um, so I was thinking that if I got to go, then I would probably bring an experiment with me, a pretty simple experiment, one that you could perform in a small area, okay. but I would like to perform a science experiment. And uh, it's always what I've wanted to do. I, I, I'm not so much into the space tourism thing, but I'm really into the space research thing, and I would like to be an astronaut, so that's uh, my objective. Uh, so you can support me by voting. It's actually just free Facebook votes. Uh, VoteAndrewToSpace.com and you can also find out more information about it on my public Facebook page if you just search for my name Andrew Rader you can find it or Rader.Andrew at uh, Facebook. Okay and is this something a lifelong dream I mean do you feel kind of all your experiences oh. in your school has it been leading up to a moment like this? I think so this is absolutely what I've always wanted to do um, so it is a lifelong dream and more so it's a lifelong dream of mine to go to Mars, actually. That's really what I want to do in the long run, um, is go to Mars. I think maybe every little kid probably wants to go to Mars, and I'm just a big little kid. But yeah. um, Hey, you've worked for it, though. You've earned it. Yeah, I it mean, is, if anyone should get to go to Mars. It is my uh, research background, my interest. Uh, I'm just wild about space, so 
I think you know this is a great opportunity and your viewers can really help out here. Yeah, why, why is it so appealing to you? And I mean, I'm sure it's hard to say, you know, one or two reasons, but going to space, going to Mars, what would that mean? I think it's the next big step for humanity. I mean, we've always, since we were on the plains of Africa a million years ago, we've just expanded into every new territory on Earth. Mm -hmm. And I think it's time that we expand off Earth. There's a lot of other planets out there. There are billions of stars in our galaxy billions of galaxies and then um, there are a lot of really interesting planets that we can go to in billions of planets and I think eventually in the long run if we don't wipe ourselves out we are going to be a multi-planet species and I think it's we have the technology to do that now to start mm. now and I think this is the time we should do it I think it's an incentive uh, it's a technology driver I think it's a really good way to get us to figure out how to live on other planets mm -hmm. and develop uh, sustainable methods of closed system life support okay Andrew thank you so much for your time today we expect big things from you you can hopefully Skype with us when you're up there on Mars okay absolutely don't you forget about us yeah it won't do Andrew Rader, thank <laughs> you so much thank for you your very time. Much.